All right, so let's get this meeting started. Happy Monday. Uh, happy middle of December. Happy very, very close to the end of this year. And, uh, and happy almost Christmas. So uh, pick your uh, favorite Sorry. among those happinesses, <laughs> if that's even a word. OK, so starting the meeting off with uh, reviewing the previous action items. Um, champions will test their respective area of the new mobile optimized site today. And that was actually December 3rd. And, and that uh, involved Matt, Roland, and Madalena. Yeah, I've checked that it out various times. Yep, all done. Done? All right, yeah, I can, I can confirm. Uh, there's lots of feedback. One big quest, though. It looks like some people might have uh, used the site without logging in. So there is a lot of feedback that I can't confirm. Um, so if uh, that fits, um, or if, if you are one of those people, please check again being logged in. Uh, and please report back or remove the parts from the either pad. Otherwise, we have reports that I, I just don't know what to do with. Uh, I think they are from people who aren't logged and but I want to make sure before we move on. Okay, I was logged in. You won't see the new UX if you don't log in. Yeah, exactly. Say, like, right. So that's yeah. the point. So okay. a lot of re some reports look like people were looking at the old side, uh, but I, I can't be sure. So yeah, whatever. Uh, if, if, if uh, please please check it in again. <laughs> So you're saying that you can't reproduce all the problems, but that's fine. Like if right. you can't reproduce them, then they're fixed, or we can assume that they're fixed. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding anything. For everything else, I have prioritized uh, the issues that are reported uh, and the ones that are marked as P1 and P2, you will get to uh, before the launch. All right. And as an update, uh, we are so actually. I, I guess we can move on directly to the next one. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Uh, well, there is one more action item, so uh, I, we can also take that action item, but I can talk about that during the uh, yeah, metrics that was yours. discussion. Yeah, I, th I thought that's, sorry, I thought that that was the one you meant. Go ahead. Yeah, I can, I can do that during the metrics discussion because I have an update there too. Um, but talking about uh, Sumo development update, this is the main issue, uh, launching the uh, mobile side. So the original launch date was tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't got. Uh, I, I didn't get to talk to our developers yet. Uh, they have a work week, so they will. They are traveling right now. As soon as I've talked to them and now what the status is, I can tell whether we can actually launch tomorrow or or not. And I, it, I would say that probably uh, right now it looks like we will delay that a little bit to Thursday to also give our community a bit more time to actually uh, check out the new theme and new design. Um, but pending any big issues, um, Thursday should be the day to actually launch this. Great. Yay. Hey, um, related to that, I did record the meeting from Wednesday, the mobile mm -hmm. uh, meeting. So, Kadir, I don't know if you um, want to look at that or what's in the notes, if that would help you. But they did say, Rehan did feel like he was on track for this week sometime. Right. We, we are missing one little piece that, uh, that should actually go in today, hopefully, uh, and that is the switch between the mobile and the desktop side, so that you can actually switch between those two sides. Yeah, uh, once we have sure. that in, yeah, uh, that, that's already designed. It should go in. I, I need to check with them what's going on there. But, but as soon as that is in, we are actually feature complete. So, yeah, uh, but I will check the notes to make sure that, that I'm also on top of that. Thank you for that, okay. Michelle. Sure. Other than that, you can. Um, so I won't talk too much. Uh, you can see what, what we are doing with the uh, roadmap items uh, this week or this sprint um, on the either pad. And just a heads up: this sprint is is three weeks uh, instead of the usual uh, two weeks, because it's basically the end of the year and the last week is uh, Christmas and New Year. So it didn't make sense to start a new sprint during that time. So then uh, the next sprint uh, is starting uh, in in January. The, I think it's the 2nd of January, the Tuesday then. Uh, yeah. And that's it from the... the um, Did that cover UX too? No? Uh, on, on the UX side right now, uh, Brown is working on various uh, issues that come up while we're implementing uh, the mobile theme. 
So uh, there is a lot of back and forth. Uh, we implement something, we realize that, that something is missing and he's helping us out there. Uh, bigger issues are currently waiting um, and uh, he is going to be on vacation, I think, from next week on. So uh, there is nothing going on there right now. All right, any questions around development, updates, or UX for Kadir? All right. Thanks, Kadir. And uh, Thanks, over guys. to the roundtable section, which is um, getting pretty dense here and very colorful. I like that. Um, <laughs> so first topic is um, uh, discussion topic. Are we, wait, who added this? Andrew did. Andrew, it's about live Andrew, chat. Okay. All right. Um, what, is there a question here? I'm not sure if I'm supposed. To, are we supposed to look at the thread, or is there anything particular um, that we should discuss? Did anyone actually look at this before? Yeah, I, I, I actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I talked to Satya um, last week, and he told me that he has uh, he, he was doing some research. Um, I told him that we were not going to look into live chat anytime soon, um, because we decided to use the support forums um, as our main way of giving support because you know you can scale them and um, that that's the, that was like the stake of the team but I know yep. that there were there was a thread in the forum talking about some new program that some people were um, testing Tyler I don't know if, uh, if you know that program yeah it just looks like a couple people have been experimenting with different chat support um, platforms and that that's just a resurgence of the thread with some of those suggestions in it mm -hmm. so I'm sure Andrew, I know he was wanting to make the meeting, but he had to leave, um, so he wasn't able to. Um, so we might be able to catch him on IRC, uh, I think later this afternoon, and ask about it. It's uh, Andrew here, live in, live in the sound here. Oh, great. Hi. Oh, hello. Hey, Andrew. Hey, welcome. How's it going? Not too bad, how are you? Good, awesome. doing very well, thank you. <clears throat> so, so is this so the discussion, Andrew, that you want to talk about is is that the specific is that a specific solution or or do, are are we discussing kind of the reasons why we uh, decided to uh, to put live chat on hold for this in favor of the self service you know, focus this year? Yeah. Because I'm reading the thread and I'm not sure which. Yeah, go ahead. What uh, is there a chance that we can bring live chat back? Well, so I mean, so we we talked about this before that we made we made a decision this year uh, to uh, to we we basically reprioritize our our resources so that we could maximize the the helpfulness for our end users, and so it turns out that as we did this kind of um, research, uh, we I think we 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 were helping around 300 people per week in live chat, mm -hmm. and. Uh, of those 300 people, on, on only um, 150 people, or basically half of those people, were actually walking away from the live chat session with, a, with an answer to their questions. So basically, the the conclusion that was that we were spending resources that on this thing, live chat, that we could spend on something else that could have more leverage. So this year, what we did is that we invested in the self-service parts of the you know our platform, which is. Uh, you know the stuff that we've been working on with uh, the information architecture uh, and Kadir actually blogged about this very recently the results of that uh, which was uh, correct me if I'm wrong Kadir but it's in the in the uh, in the kind of the rounds of maybe seven to eight million people helped more people helped each year and so so the like you can it's easy to see why we made the decision to put live chat on hold because we have very limited resources and so we're trying to focus on the stuff that really matters now your question is probably more can we can, like could we do something uh, in addition to what we're already doing and and i've you know i've already i think we all kind of have said the same thing that that might be it might be possible to have some sort of live chat uh, that is um and entirely Kind of organic and, and in no requirement of active moderation, uh, that might be a, a nice complement to the forum that we're we're hosting. But I don't know what that would look like, so I can't really give you a yes or no question, Andrew. I, I, all I can say is that I'm still interested in exploring what is possible and what you know would be the benefits of having live chat in addition to to the forum. 
but but the reason why we shut it down previously was because of lack of resources and and the solution that we had at that time really also sucked in terms of like the usability of the 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 client that people were forced to use which was called spark and uh you know it was it was pretty terrible so okay. it was also based on that that we made the decision to, to we don't have the resources to invest in that platform and we didn't have any better platform um so so i guess you know the short the short version of that answer is i'm interested in exploring other opportunities and having that discussion with you and anyone else who's interested in the topic but i don't have i don't know the answer and I know that that's probably not a um, satisfying answer to you, but that's basically the answer that I have. I think that one yeah. of the one of the the important things that we that we mentioned at that time, uh, at the beginning of this year, was that if somebody from the community wants to champion this and they propose a solution, we'll be we'll be happy to 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 help promote this this live chat. Uh, the, the the main difference is that. In, in the main line or the main roadmap, we're not considering live chat right now, but we, we will be happy if Sadab or Andrew yourself, you want to champion this project and, and move forward with it. Yeah, I sense? guess, I mean, yeah, basically we, we as, as it stands right now with our resources, we don't have, we don't have the resources to allocate uh, paid staff to, to work on, uh, live chat when we have something like the the forum which provides better leverage yeah uh, so it's more it's really a resource prioritization thing uh, but if we can find a volunteer that wants to try this and experiment and see what works and like certainly if you want to prove us wrong <laughs> that this is something that could scale and be really successful then i would be more than happy to see that experiment take yeah. off uh, but but w i wouldn't have the resources to to facilitate it so yeah, one other thing about, um, uh, one of the th other things I remember that I was talking about was this thing about uh, um, leverage, right? So the, one of the issues about the live chat was we had a lot of contributors and a lot of time spent on it. And like you were saying, right, we would answer like 300 questions, maybe only 150 of them were solved. But even those 150 that got solved, only those 150 people saw the answer. No one else got to see the answer. So yeah. I would say also, Andrew, when you're thinking about this, if there's some way to be able to make those things public so that, um, you know, yeah. you answer a question and it's not just lost on, you know, only that one person gets the answer. That's the nice thing about our forum um, is that someone can ask the question. Now it's searchable, findable, can be mark solved. It, and, it, and, all, and we can use it also to collect data to determine what our top issues are and those kind of things. And none of those benefits um, our previous live chat thing was, do, was doing for us. It wasn't really searchable. It wasn't providing a whole lot of insight. Um, and it was only helping a few people and taking like yep. an inordinate amount of time to help those few people. Right. Yeah, I mean, basically the, the live chat is one to one and, and the forum is one to many in terms of how many people can benefit from the answer. Yeah, I think the other thing we, I mean, that live chat, there's a couple of things that we recognize that live chat does well. Um, and one is it builds community. Obviously, yep. we have a lot of community members who really liked it. Um, and so even if it helped, the other, I mean, I think the thing that was always my concern with live chat um, was that you had to make sure there were experts in live chat. So if there was a question that someone couldn't answer, in the form you can just kind of let it go, right? And there's another person who comes back, you know, four hours later who might know the answer and can solve that question. Here, if you have the two active live chat people who don't know an answer, then you're stuck, right? So there's always some problem with scaling, right? Yeah. But, like when I ran live chat, like I always had to be online all the time, even if I wasn't actively in a session because if someone got stuck, you know, Matthew or I had to come in and jump in and say, oh, look, here's how you actually solve the question because, you know, we have relatively new community members. Right. Um, and that was, so it's not just time consuming for people answering the questions, it's actually really time consuming for the person above them, a layer up, who says, okay, now I need to dedicate eight hours of my day to this and be interrupted randomly, you know, every time live chat is open. Um, 
So that's it. I mean, there's like a lot of little problems to solve in live chat. Like I think the concept is very good. Even if it doesn't answer that many users' questions, it builds community and has a lot of other benefits. But there are a lot of little hurdles, I think, is the kind of things we need to discuss and figure out how to get around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew, um, I just wanted to say like how, how this all sounds to you. What, what do you, you know, what do you think of, you know, like we, we've talked for a long time. So I, I thought I'd just give you the, the chance to, to tell us, you know, what you think about this. No. Oh, sorry. Uh, basically, I mean, like one-on-one -on -one is basically we we care about the uh, user more instead of just for a whole variety of people. Uh, right. So that that's a good, that's a that's a good point. Is that there's no right and wrong here. It's basically we're making a priority on number of people we can help. But you're right. If you're if you're helping one in one person in live chat. <laughs> you can be really sure that you're helping that person. Whereas in the forum, you can't be as sure, but you can be pretty sure that you're going to reach more people. Uh, so there's a trade-off. And there's no, there's, no, you know, there's no silver bullet kind of solution to this. Uh, but the, the bet that we're, we were making uh, in the beginning of this year was that we wanted to invest in, in leverage, making sure that we can reach as many people as possible. So that's why we chose to those 300 people that we were able to help per week with live chat, we were able, we were, we were prepared to make that call to trade those people, um, and invest in 800 million, 8 million people more uh, <laughs> to get help in the knowledge space instead. So, and, and I mean, and those, those are pretty powerful numbers, of course. But, but, but at the end of the day, it was a bet. Like we didn't know exactly what would, uh, you know, what, what would be the result of it, um, and so. At the end of the day, like I think Ebay's point on leverage, on scale, and making <coughs> this successful, uh, the way to do that is to create a, a live chat system that is so many people want to use that it's basically 24/7 coverage, right. or at least uh, you know a, a good f number of hours per day, and that uh, that was something that we could never achieve uh, in the past, and it could be due to the the platform. And if that's the case, investing in a new platform, the estimation was that it would take six to nine months to, to develop a new, a new system. And we simply made the, the call that, that that isn't an investment that we can make. So I think that's, a, that's something to keep in mind, that you know, the investment that it takes to build something really powerful that scales is a huge investment. Um, and so if you, can, if you consider the fact that it's not going to help, it's going to help people in, in, in the numbers around hundreds, not millions. Um, then you can see why we made the choice that we made. But so we should continue this discussion offline. Uh, I see the thread, uh, and I encourage everyone to 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 take part of that. And um, and also, Kadir, maybe you, we should follow up with those numbers so that everyone participating yeah. in that thread can see uh, more clearly now that we also have the facts because we made the choice back then based on leverage. But now we also have the numbers and the data that can prove that that's that was the right call to make. But but that doesn't mean that there's no um, that it's not possible to find something that that might work. So I'd like to continue that discussion, but but it's important that everyone understands where we are coming from. Yeah, um, right. I just wanted to add something, um, Andrew. Maybe you you know because you know there's a lot of things that you know we maybe have some more uh, insight because uh, you know we're working all the time on this. But just give it a uh, you know just think about what we said and you know what the reasons that we have. And as David said, we can uh, continue the the, the discussion um, on the thread. And if you have ideas. Um, or you know, if if you, if if you think that you know that that one to one support um, it's uh, it's so important, we can then uh, talk about it then. Yeah, and I also want to add one thing. There was a discussion at a certain point uh, when we talked about live chat uh, about trying to integrate some features of live chat in the support forum. Yeah. So just to make it a bit, you know, to kind of trade one thing to, for another, we might want to think about that again, uh, if this is important. Just say that. Yep. Yeah, that's right. There was a things, things about having like online notifications or like how yeah. long you might expect to wait to have your question answered. I've noticed like last uh, week during the Sumo day, there was there was uh, one thread that I traded answers back and forth with somebody pretty quickly, uh, almost in real time. Um, it, it was kind of similar to a live chat thing. 
so so let's let's re let's use this new thread uh, that was created about this topic as an <coughs> opportunity to uh, ensure that we're synchronized and that we can we can recap the reasons why we made the decision, but also explore uh, uh, ways and opportunities and ideas that might that might give us something that um, that works. And it could be a hybrid forum thing, or it could be a live chat thing, or it could be just acknowledging or, or, or accepting the decision to, to not invest in live chat. But I, and again, I don't know what the answer is, but I think we should have that. Take that discussion offline because we can't, we can't uh, come up with the answer in this meeting. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions that I would like to ask Andrew, now that we have him here, is what exactly are you missing from the live chat experience? So, so that is an, a perfect question for to continue in the thread. Uh, the thread. I don't think okay. that th because there are there are going to be tense questions associated with that. So, no, no, my my strong recommendation yeah. is let's 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 take this discussion offline. Uh, yeah, because just to be clear, what we tried to ask this question before and we didn't have much traction. So, I just wanted to to use a one minute extra of the time, but I'm happy to follow up on on the thread. Okay. So thanks everyone. Let's continue the discussion offline in the thread, um, and, and let's remember that question, Ebay. That's a good question to yeah. ask in the thread. I will. All right, cool. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks everyone else. Uh, okay, next topic is Twitter. Twitter army of awesome. Um, yes. Wondering. I, I, Okay, I, ahead, I know about that. I can answer. Yeah, so it's, um, I think also Andrew posted that it's about um, Jake Mars, who got his Twitter suspended the third time because he was tweeting like crazy on Army of Awesome. Uh, so I have contacted Twitter regarding his account. Uh, for now, he needs to, I actually already talked to him about this. Um, he needs to slow down and actually stop tweeting until we get this solved. It seems that he's on some kind of a blacklist because it's strange that nobody else got suspended. It's just his account that keeps getting suspended like the last week. Uh, he keeps getting suspended and then unsuspended and suspended again. So it might be that he was reporting a spam, a spam and he's on some kind of blacklist. So we'll try to, to get that solved. Until then, if you're online, please don't tweet and we'll see what where we're getting. Twitter, unfortunately, it's cannot do much about um, like our system because they just track any kind of account with tweets like crazy so okay. we should also say that a number of people actually who are top contributors they don't get their accounts cancelled or I mean accounts aren't cancelled in general they're just yeah. uh, uh, being put on hold so you can always uh, unblock those accounts again um, yeah. But then again, a lot of our contributors who are currently contributing, they don't get on those block lists. Uh, so there might be something in uh, the people that you approach, the way you approach them, uh, that might have something to do with whether they report uh, your tweets as uh, spam or not. So that's also something to check. Uh, that's what we got back from Twitter support. Basically, this is not an automatic thing. It's, uh, it's, it's started by people who flag those responses, those tweets. Uh, okay. Thank do you, we, Madalena. Madalena, yeah. you used a question that I wanted to ask you last week. Mm -hmm. Do we exactly know if all these people are reported as spam, or what's exactly the trigger? I think it's oh, the volume, we, right? The volume? Yeah, the volume yeah, is the, the trigger, bot. and the f the volume is the so, trigger, and also the fact that they have links. Okay. Well, I wouldn't be. I'm not so. Are you sure about that? Uh, I think oh, that's I'm not. Yeah, I'm not like 100% sure because it's not like the the problem with Twitter support is that they're giving you like the general answer, so they they won't give you like specific. Yes, this account was flagged yeah. because and because. So it's usually just some general answer, like general support answer. So I can only assume, but I would say that's the case. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. There's probably an algorithm that looks at uh, the frequency of posting, the number of posting, and also the use of links. All of those things speak to spam. So it's kind of a karma score system that I yeah. guess that they're using. But exactly how it works, no one yeah. knows. But did they, they don't want to disclose that. No. Did anyone yeah, ask? Just a 
just to mention, like Swarnava was posting exactly. hundreds of uh, tweets a with day. links. Hundreds a day. He wasn't. Yeah. yeah. That's that was that. Yeah. Would be well, my it's also the recency that. of the account. That's the, so. If you have had an account for a long time, that's a different thing than if you create a new one. You join Army of Awesome and you start to use it very frequently. Then that's gonna, that's that's also factoring in the yeah. karma points. Yeah. Tyler, you want to say something? Uh, probably another thing to do is when you do tweet is make sure that it's relevant. The answer you're tweeting is relevant to the person you're replying to, so then they don't feel like they have to uh, report you as spam. If they say mm -hmm. Firefox is slow and you say, thanks for using Firefox, they might be more tendency <laughs> right. to uh, report you as spam than if you actually give them an answer. Right. Yeah. So that's another factor that if someone actually reports you, then obviously that also influences the likeliness of this you you are be you becoming blocked okay yeah, maybe we should also look at the can responses maybe there's something we can do with them i don't know yeah maybe we need to reevaluate the usage of can responses mhm mm well i wouldn't i mean that would take away all the usefulness of army of awesome if we took that away so i don't think that we should do that but certainly we should make sure that they're up to date and valid um and so if that's not the case then we should definitely do it so can can you uh, take that on your um, uh, as your responsibility, Madalena, to um, yeah, sure. review the the canned responses. All right. Yep. Awesome. And Madalena, okay. if you uh, let me know what what ones you think uh, need updating, just let me know too. I can help. I'll help update them. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next roundtable topic. Um, trying to speed up a little bit here. So will we be merging the Sumomo, uh, the, the Thunderbird Sumo contributor forums with the Sumo contributor forum? Um, and the answer is no. OK. We will not. We, it's just too much work. We, we have a hard enough task with KV Eccles. So we will, we, the content will be gone. Don't worry. I will, we have an archive. We'll have a backup if we need it, which I doubt we will. But we'll have a backup. OK. Thanks, Roland. Um, we have a meeting on Wednesday, uh, the mobile meeting. That's uh, you, Michelle, right? <coughs> Hosting that meeting? OK. Yep. So you have the time there in Pacific summertime, no? PT, I guess. Standard time. Standard so, time. Oh, is that what it's set? Yeah. Ah. So we're on standard I've time. I've always thought that the S, oh, PDT, that's the daylight, daylight saving time. thing. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, uh, confusing. so confusing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Only okay. one time zone, UTC. <laughs> oh, it's always summer on the West Coast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Except right now, right? It's raining in San Francisco. No, it's uh, beautiful and it's blue. Yeah, not today. Uh, it's just uh, wishful so, yeah, Wednesday, me. oh, sorry, Wednesday we have the mobile meeting. And then Thursday is Help Articles Day, so yes. I don't think I have that on the e right. Etherpad, but or maybe it is. But do join us. Uh, all right. Okay. And there so... are some changes. I guess some changes also in the mobile space. Roland, you want to announce oh, your yeah. changes? Oh, right. right. Um, <laughs> I am taking over Michelle's uh, former job of. Firefox for Android support coordinator as of a week ago, I guess. Yay! So, uh, yay! Yay me! Uh, so, <laughs> if, in, 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 for those people out there who are watching this recording, are we recording this? Yes. Yeah. Um, or on the call, if you were going to contact Michelle, please contact me uh, about Android issues. And um, you can always complain to Michelle if I'm not, uh, <laughs> not treating you well. <laughs> She's still around. I'm still here. Uh, yes, and our new team member, Ralph. Ralph, speak up so we can see you. I can't see you in the Matrix. Hello. Say something more. Like, like hello? I'm Ralph. Hello in Portuguese, and... perhaps? Oh. oh. There Hola. you go. Tudo bem, galera? <laughs> 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 That's great. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah, he's going to be helping out with the Firefox OS uh, localization, support, um, everything that's going to come with Firefox OS. So welcome, Ralph. Awesome. Warmly. Welcome, Ralph. Yeah. Well, Good Ralph. news, everyone. He's based in Portland, so also West Coaster. Mm -hmm. Best city in the world, right, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have to say that. 
<laughs> Matt, you've turned everybody else into into Portland uh, uh, evangelists. I, I, I've never I even been little... there. I know it's the best. Funny city. enough, I actually had, I actually had someone tell me last night to stop telling people how awesome Portland is because we're getting too many people coming here. <laughs> uh-huh. I, oh my god! I, I, so, somebody told me the many other day people. actually that Matt is not even living in Portland as much as he brags about it. I live in Portland. What, what is that? Can we hear more about that? Of- you don't have a Portland <laughs> address? Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh. It's gr- it's greater Portland. I'm in the burbs. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, right. Also, um, I just want to say thanks for your 56 for all the stuff you do and for being here on the call today. It's awesome yeah. to have your participation. I didn't get to say that earlier, so I'm shoving it in. Yeah, thanks my totally. Mobile parts. So. That's it for mobile. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so last thing is a suggestion to use uh, the Sumo video room for these meetings from now on. And uh, Michael says yes to that. So that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I say yes. It, what, is it, what is the name of the room? It's Sumo. Sumo. Yeah. Sumo. <laughs> All right. And so, so I'll, I'll update next week's Etherpad and the wiki the like call in information with the new room links and stuff. I did it for the the Thursday KB meeting we had last week on Thursday in the sumo room and I changed yep. it there. I'll just change it on this stuff after the meeting today. Cool. Uh great. So uh, with round table any other round table topics? Any other Things people want to talk about before we head over to Firefox desktop. All right, Firefox desktop, Matt. All right. Uh, so not a lot of updates for desktop this week. So I wanted to take some time to talk about a project that we've been working on. Um, last week, Noah, Noah was asking me some questions about all of the block lists that you have probably seen coming through. So lots of things are getting blocked recently. Um, these are all part of a coordinated effort with the add-ons team. Uh, we've been working on a project. We're calling it Project Squeaky Clean, and we are trying to make add-ons as awesome as they can possibly be. Uh, so as we all know, add-ons are one of the things that make Firefox so great. Um, unfortunately, some people can get into a state where the add-ons also uh, hurt their Firefox experience. So what we're trying to do is come up with better ways for these users to recover uh, in these instances so they can always get the best Firefox experience. The, the AMO guys have been just amazing and they're really driving this effort. Um, we can't you know, thank them enough. Um, it's kind of in the early stages right now, so you're going to see a lot of things getting block listed. We're changing some of the policies. We're going to be enforcing those with a little bit of a heavier hand. Uh, but there's also a lot of work that's going to be going into the product itself. So you can see some of the uh, fruits of our labor. So in Nightly right now, we've actually got a new feature in there that will reset your uh, keyword search if an add-on has changed it without your permission. It gives you a little notification, lets you know. So some people will uh, will definitely benefit from that. Um, but yeah, this is all just kind of early days. You can check out the project, see some of the things that we're working on. Um, lots and lots of cool stuff coming in, in the, the coming year. So keep an eye on it. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions about that? All right. Um, how can we contribute? The only question is, how can we contribute to to this if we we have anything? Yeah. So if anybody wants to come to the meetings, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, if you have any feedback, questions, anything like that, so uh, Michael and Tyler have been huge, huge contributors to this project. Or you can reach out to me. Um, contact any of us if you have questions, feedback, anything. Awesome. Also, if you ever have like say a new add-on comes out on the forums that's causing a lot of problems or you know something yeah. like that free feel free to let us know and we'll uh, pursue that yeah so basically keeping an eye out in the forum for malicious add-ons in general would be helpful for you okay cool thanks uh firefox android and uh over to you roland <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, finishing up the needs changes today so that we can do a Firefox 18 during the help article sprint on Thursday and leading up to Firefox 18. 
That's it. All right. Uh, Firefox OS. So I added a note here uh, from a conversation uh, we started last week. We are going to be looking into hosting developer support in in Sumo, support.mozilla.org. We will talk about more details as soon as they come, but just a heads up that we are talking with other parties, MDN, uh, the developer ecosystem, the developer hub uh, team, just to make sure that there is a, a cohesive strategy for developers. Uh, more to come soon. Just, this so is not the, a surprise uh, whenever it comes soon. Support for their apps? Support for no, themselves no. When, when developers have issues with the marketplace itself. Okay. So I'm okay. trying. To, I'm trying to send my app and it's not getting approved. Or I'm trying to get okay. uh, paid and and I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I cannot register. I lost my account. Okay. Thank you. It's more than yeah, so not how to. It's not API. It's yeah. not API support. Yeah. Okay. Right. So there. I mean, really, there are two types of developer support. One is the actual programming uh, an HTML5 app support. Right. And the other one is the more operational That's side of things. Which, side. Yeah, that, so it's, what we're doing is the operational support. We're not dealing with uh, actual app support, HTML5 <laughs> hacking support. And, and there are documentation for that on MDN. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but we're part of, like eBay is driving uh, this, the, the overall strategy around all of our support. But what will likely end up on Sumo on support.mozilla.org is the operational yeah, side. Yeah, that, that, that's going to be the core. Uh, it's going to be, we, we'll see some questions about coding for sure. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it will become uh, one of the points where they can ask this type of questions. But the core, the core of the, uh, the issues that we want to tackle are these operational ones, business like. Because we say developer support, but probably it means partners. If in Thinka, the developer is not going to be the one coming to us. It's going to be somebody who is in operations. While an indie developer, when it's a one-man orchestra, is a developer who is also the business person who deals with the with the submissions, the apps approval, and all that stuff. So if, the only thing is here, if you have ideas, questions, things that you think that may not work. Uh, you just let me know. Well, and, and you are working on a strategy around this. Is that something yes. that you will share? Uh, I will share it as soon as it's, it's, it's a little bit more fleshed out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thunderbird, back to Roland. Um, <laughs> yeah, there will be, hopefully, the migration will start this week. It really depends on the developers are, uh, are the gating people at this point, um, and there's a tracker bug. So if you have anything around the migration, contact me or file a bug and, and block migration it on the Migration for Can you clarify what the migration is? We're just of? migrating the Thunderbird knowledge base to sumo.mozilla.org using the multi-platform features that are landing this week, which are intended for Firefox OS and Thunderbird, and I guess Marketplace. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Metrics, Kadir. So yeah, there is one update on the metrics, and actually, uh, this is a um, this is something from last week. Uh, there was a weirdness in uh, the alpha and coverage number, which has been flat for two weeks. Uh, so I looked into that, and actually, um, I was reminded of something that I didn't think about back then, and it's important to actually uh, keep that in mind, also for future uh, reference. So what, what we have uh, on, as the alternate coverage number is a simplified model where the top 50 articles are not actually uh, counted. Uh, so we don't count the views proportionally. We count them, we count each article as 2% uh, of the total, like 1 50th. Uh, so each article has the same importance to us if it's in the top 50. Because that is the case, um, each, artic each individual article has a very little impact on the Elton and coverage. Um, so even if one article actually drops, uh, so if, if, if you update one article in the top 50, it's, it only means that uh, the coverage goes down uh, 2%. And um, yeah, so basically it's, it's normal to see very little variations on the Elton and coverage if English doesn't change. 
because the English change actually makes a big uh, difference on the uh, L2N uh, chart. If German or French articles are being updated, uh, they have very little effect on the uh, total coverage because German is the biggest language, makes up only 10% of the overall views. And if you update one article in German, it means that you are going up 0.2% in the coverage. And since we are rounding uh, to integers, 0.2 doesn't even show up on the coverage uh, chart. So would it be less, uh, will, 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 could we have solved this problem by just not rounding off like that and just keeping at least one decimal? Or, like I'm just we can, we can. Uh, the difference is just uh, it, it will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, it it doesn't yeah. make much of a difference. No, I was just I I just recognized the fact that we were freaking out about this thing and you have this research thing just to kind of get the answer that okay it's a round off thing. So maybe like not having that, we would we would be able to to not have this discussion. So I updated uh, the legend. It should show up later today, explaining this. Um, and also, actually, now the uh, alternate coverage has changed. You can see that after Michael has, uh, I think, made some articles as ready for LTN, uh, they uh, the the Elton N chart has changed based on that. So it's it's not a so. I thought there might there might be uh, an issue with actually what we are counting, but we, apparently we are counting the right thing, so there is no issue actually with the counting. And Good. so the thing, the, the my main concern here is that we define this metric to to keep track of la, the localization efforts, the Elton and efforts, and now they really don't matter that much because the metric is it's it's owned by by English who is that who is not localized. Well so I, I really don't know if it's worth keeping this model or we should go back to the previous one, previous definition. So I, I would say two things. First we will have uh, I think in the next sprint we will have uh, um, a graph that will segment those things so we can see yeah. the English coverage and the Elton N coverage. But on the other hand I really think it's important to keep the big picture in mind. So if the LTN coverage uh, doesn't mean, I mean, uh, if, if updating one article doesn't mean that much, then we should see that. So it's, there is no reason to freak out about uh, a drop in LTN if it means that we are only losing like 0.5% uh, of our visitor base. So it's important to keep that in mind, keep the big picture in mind. And I think this actually shows us the big picture. And if that means that we are actually reaching 80% of our visitor base, that's good. Um, otherwise, we might actually try to reach a goal that doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to, to say something here. Um, I actually, I, I think that I, I agree with Levi in the sense that just seeing uh, the whole coverage, um, it's kind of hard. So I'm, I'm glad that you're saying that next week we're going to have like uh, the segmented graphic. And, and I also think that, you know, it's good to know that we're reaching already like 80% of the people. Um, so that's great. On the other hand, of course, I would like to know a little bit more how, you know, localizing each language actually uh, uh, changes uh, the picture. And um, I don't know if this, if this is possible, but actually, I mean, we have a little problem. On the dashboards, we show contributors the top 20 articles, but we're actually counting with the top 50 articles. So there's just one thing that's, uh, you know, doesn't completely, isn't exactly the same. Then there's another thing. I mean, maybe the top five articles get like a lot of traffic and the, you know, the, the, the you know, the top, say, 10 to 50 uh, don't, and we're counting in the same way. Um, I know that it could be complicated because we, we should have to look at, you know, visits and all of that. I don't know if, if there's a way of making that alg algorithm in a way that it gives us like the precise information, um, that that would make also the metric more accurate uh, from my point of view. But nevertheless, I think that it's a great thing that we're going to have a segment of graphics next so, week. So just to say, uh, just to mention this, Rosanna, actually this is something I want to talk to you about later this week. Uh, I mentioned the simplified model on the legend uh, to this uh, graph. And I think there is definitely stuff that we can do, especially now that we are on Google Analytics where we get all the traffic data and not only for the top 2,000 pages, which usually included a lot of English stuff, very little look, look health stuff. So there are more possibilities for us now and we can look into what makes more sense for us to, to train. Okay, so this looks like work in progress. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say those those individual dashboards I think are are important, and then like Madalena's, I mean like Rosanna's saying, the uh, a better um, 
model in terms of views because you know those top 20 articles is 50% of our views the next 30 is like another 25% so it's much much different and the top 10 you know is probably 25% but those other you know second those like uh, 21 to 50 is probably the same as the top 10 uh, yep. in terms of views it's it drops off really fast yeah, the, the, the return of investment diminishes yeah. uh, as you get past this point. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. uh, I, so, so to summarize, we have this one K KPI now that give us, gives us kind of the high level overview of how, how are we tracking on a global scale. Uh, with the per locale dashboards, we will be able to see it more clearly. I have some ideas on actually how we could create a hybrid of those two things, so, but I'll take that offline with, with Rosanna and, and Kadir. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to start the discussion and see what, because I think we can probably do some things that can give us a little better sense of, of how we're tracking, not just on the global kind of scale. Uh, anyway, but already starting next week, we'll, we'll get the segmented view, so that will already start to show us more more um, granularity, which is great. Okay, um, so uh, community updates. Uh, are there any community updates? Not specifically. I mean, there are, but not in this section. Okay. Same with L10, I assume. So knowledge base. Same thing uh, Roland said. We're doing Firefox 18 updates this week. We should update articles for Firefox 18 on Thursday. If you had five minutes of, of uh, someone's time uh, in our community, what would, what would your ask be? We'll have that list of needs changes for Firefox 18. Uh, some of them are probably, I don't know, small enough. I don't know if you could do it in five minutes, but maybe. Say 10 minutes then. Yeah. So, so uh, in that link, is, is that some, can you add that perhaps to this agenda too? To the needs changes, yes. They're not uh, marked on there as far as I know right now. Roland, have you marked some? Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. Yeah, I, I me will, either. <laughs> but yeah, there's probably five minute changes in there actually already. So. And just so you know, the convention I've been using is like uh, square bracket 18 square bracket at the beginning of the needs changes note. Right, right. Uh, all right. Support forum. Yes, that's me. So, support forum, we had a sumo day last week. We had 97% uh, of questions answered. Yay! Great job, Ooh. everybody. And I want to mention some of our top contributors for last sumo day, starting with Corel, who's our support jo legend. Well done, Corel. Matt Person, Grilida, IMJ Kumars, uh, who's our rising star. He's the guy who keeps getting his Twitter account sus suspended like oh. three times this week because he's doing so much. So <laughs> sorry about that. And thank you for all your contribution. Fear56, uh, hello, Andrew. Thank you so much. Hard our hard. own, our own David Tensor. He made it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, this year 2000. This year 2000. And Alice, thank you guys yeah. so much. Oh, um, Alice. <laughs> yes, Alice. <laughs> and Thanks, yeah, this is this is it. Um, and I'll see you in another week's time for a new sumo day. Good awesome. job, good good job, everyone. Good job. I was surprised you. to see myself on that list. I, I didn't yeah. expect. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't point put up the numbers because I'm sure Corel answered maybe 200 questions and I answered 10 or something. <laughs> but but uh, this is why he's a legend. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Manalina. Um, I have recorded some decisions and action items. Um, continue the discussion about live chat offline. There's a link to it. And uh, I think we specifically we should make sure that there's alignment on the reasons why we made the decisions that we made. And uh, we should follow up with the, the actual data around the IA. I was well, going to ask Kadir if you wanted to take a, a lead on that one, provide that information. So we, to be honest, I just looked into the thread and there is no, um, uh, uh, so there was some uh, feedback on, on uh, or people actually responded with why we didn't, why we moved away from the, um, from chat and there has been no, no response to that yet. 
So I'll wait for that response. So if anyone is really interested, then we will see the response, and then I will uh, be glad to uh, post uh, more about what we did. Anyone else can actually read up uh, uh, on our blog. Um, but right now, I think we made our position pretty clear and uh, also our uh, arguments. So do you want me to take that action item away? Yeah, I mean, there is, yeah, please. The one about the IA? Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll sign up myself for, for uh, participating in the thread. Uh, if anyone else uh, can join me, please do that. Um, and uh, ultimately, if we do get into a discussion about what we can take from live chat and incorporate into the forum, I'd like someone to drive that. So can I assume that, Madalena, that you would take the lead on that? You're muted, but uh, it yeah. looks like you're... <laughs> yeah, I was saying, yeah, I already have some stuff because I had this conversation before with uh, the live chat people, so. Okay. Thank you. And then we have Madalina to review to review the canned responses for Army of Awesome to make sure that they're still relevant. Michael can help. Uh, starting next week, we will use another video room for this meeting. So uh, search for Sumo on video and you will find the room. And Michael will add and update all the call-in information. And that's it. Awesome. Have a great week. With three bye. minutes to spare. Make the most yeah. of it. <laughs> awesome. bye. 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 Right, bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.